Hello everyone, Nadex here, and welcome to another episode of Feed the Basics. In this episode, I'm going to talk about energy networks. Now, in the previous episode, I created this small automated crafting process, taking from the most basic iron ore into pulverized iron, into smelted iron ingots, into then crafting iron helmets. Now, on its own, it's current that's working, but as you can see, if you're not familiar with uh, Feed the Beast packs, when you're looking at this setup, you might it might look kind of odd to you, mainly because why am I using two engines? Both of those machines require Billcraft Synergy, and why am I using two engines in kind of an insufficient way? And what I'm saying is basically, for example, if this if the furnace will be full on energy, uh, but for example the pulverizer will still require more energy. Uh, this engine will simply only try to power the furnace and it will be a little bit inefficient because it could in theory power this pulverizer yet it doesn't. So this is where energy networks come into play. Now energy networks and networks in general are a big part of um, most of mods in Feed the Beast packs. Well not most of them but there are more than a few mods with, um, with networks between them. Um, most of the time it's energy networks. So in this episode I'm going to cover the Billcraft network for energy and also I'm going to touch on the industrial craft energy network. So let's begin. So what I'm basically my plan is instead of uh, using two engines, one dedicated to each machine, which in, in my opinion is relatively bad and most people experienced with the Beast will also tell you it's kind of a bad idea mainly because as I've said one machine may get full up with energy and the other one still requires some, yet they don't do any good. So this is where in Billcraft pipes come into play. Pipes are uh, a very specific part to Billcraft uh, and you can use them obviously in conjunction to many other mods, but pipes are something comes for Billcraft and they're very useful. As you can see there are transport pipes, there is a wooden transport pipe, cobblestone transport pipe, stone, iron, diamond, gold, obsidian and so on. Each one of them has a specific role, however I'm not going to cover the transport pipes, I'm going to cover the energy networks. And those are the conductive pipes. We've got a wooden conductive pipe, we've got a stone conductive pipe, a golden one, and that's it. In the newer version there are probably going to be a few more, but for the time being we've only got those three. So how do they work? Uh, well, I did say I'm not going to touch on the transport pipes, but uh, similarly to transport pipe, wooden pipes are dedicated to take something out of either storage or a machine or an engine. So let's get started on crafting some of those pipes. Uh, we're going to use the wooden conductive pipes and we're going to use the golden conductive pipes. Uh, the wooden conductive pipes require me to use redstone with a wooden transport pipe, which then in turn requires some glass, some wood, any type of wood. The ore dictionary changes the recipe, so it's fine. Any type of wood and glass will give me eight. Relatively cheap and easy recipe to make. So let's craft one set of those wooden pipes. And also let's craft one set of the golden pipes. And each one of them going to uh, combine with redstone to change them to the conductive pipes. And let's see on how they work. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm actually going to take those engines out of uh, working order. I'm going to break them quickly and move them around. So obviously any, rem any um, steel energy available in my part furnace will still be stored here, but no new energy is being generated. I can now take this away as well and take this away as well. You can also fill up the holes since I like it like that. Okay, so we've got those two machines. How exactly do we make those two engines work on the same network and power the same machine? Or both of the machines to be more precise. So the first thing I'd like to do is actually uh, make some hole in the back. I'm going to interact with the machines from the back right now. Uh, as, you can, as you have seen, uh, one engine came from the side on this machine and the other engine came from the bottom to this machine, mainly because there is no, it doesn't make any difference on which side or which face of the block the engine powers it from. It works in pretty much every direction and similarly it works the way, same way with pipes. So how does it work finally? Okay, so I'm go, what I'm going to do to demonstrate, I'm going to have two engines placed like this in the world and I'm going to introduce a new item called the wrench. Now, a wrench is a specific item for build craft, but as you can see, uh, there are many different wrenches. The default just wrench is the one uh, for build craft, but there are many different wrenches. Uh, this one is for industrial craft, this one is for applied logistics. The prototype OmniWrench is actually a very good tool you should be familiar with. This is basically 
because every mod adds its own uh, tool to, d to change things or modify things, there is actually a specific separate mod called the Omni Tools, which gives you the Omni Wrench. The Omni Wrench uh, basically lets you uh, manipulate all the different mods. Uh, because, for example, this wrench will not work, the Buildcraft wrench will not work with the industri Industrial Craft machines, but the Omni wrench will work with everything. But for the sake of the example, I'm going to craft the normal wrench, which is going to require an iron ingot and a stone gear. So let's go ahead and make that. Uh, let's make a normal wooden gear and then give us one stone gear and complete it with some iron. Now, the way the wrench works, at least for Buildcraft, it, it may work differently for every mod, but at least for Buildcraft, uh, the way it interacts with something, if I right-click right now, it does nothing. But if I place, for example, a pipe nearby, and it realizes, it basically, the, the pipe is a block that the engine can work with, if I right-click it, it will change the direction. Now, if I right-click again, it doesn't do anything, but if I have multiple blocks that can interact with a specific machine, it will rotate in between them. This is extremely uh, powerful tool. Basically, it's kind of a must. You cannot do without it. But what does exactly does it mean that it's connected to the pipe? The wooden pipe will extract energy out of engines. So if you want to uh, in basically integrate your engines into a power network, it, they must be a part of a wooden pipe. Uh, a small property of wooden pipes, they do not connect to other wooden pipes. Uh, and that's pretty much it. And the way you move energy around, you basically use either the stone conductive pipes or the uh, or the golden conductive pipes. Uh, this is pretty much, uh, in terms of Buildcraft pipes, the only difference between the stone conductive pipes and the golden conductive pipes is that basically the golden is better. It can move more energy around at the same amount of time. So this is pretty much more efficient if you can afford it. Of course, it's more expensive. It requires gold. Um, so how you connect it is very simple, simply connect it like so, and you're pretty much done. Lastly, what I'm going to do is refill, whoops, is going to refill coal into those two engines and power them both with a redstone signal. Turn it on, and as you can be able to see, you can see this small thin line, this is basically what's... Uh, uh, this is what's basically the energy in the pipes. And as you can see, if I can break those glass here, you'll be able to see that this line is kind of divided pretty much evenly in between those machines. So both of them now receive energy. Both the energy, the energy count goes, goes up for both of them. And the nice thing about this is if, for example, one machine will be completely full, the energy will only go into the machine that still requires energy. So it kind of, it's pretty much a lot more efficient. And also, in addition to all of this, uh, since at the moment both of them are now running on the same signal, using a more uh, complicated system, I can now turn off the entire production of energy or turn it on with a sim simple uh, one input. Of course, if I'm going to have more engines to the point where I cannot simply have more than one input, then yeah, that's something else. But having it like this is a little bit more... It's a bit more intelligent because, once again, the energy goes into where it's needed and it'll be a little bit more convenient with one flick of a, of a lever, you turn both off and then turn them both on. Okay, so that's pretty much it, but I would like to touch on uh, industrial craft energy networks as well, mainly because they work differently. And this is, again, one more thing that you're going to have to understand. Uh, every network is works the way the author of the mode intended it to work. This is how Space Toad, the original uh, author of Buildcraft, intended the energy networks to work for Buildcraft. Different modes work differently. So this is, for example, Industrial Craft. One more mod you may probably going to play a lot with uh, in your endeavors. Uh, what I've set up example here, I've got myself a macerator and an electric furnace. Pretty much the exact same blocks from thermal expansion. The macerator is pretty much the pulverizer and the electric furnace is pretty much the powered furnace. The only difference in between those machines are the fact that they are working on uh, energy units or EU instead of uh, Minecraft Joules. As you can see, right here I have a bad box. A bad box is something that um, actually Buildcraft doesn't have on its own, but thermal expansion gives you the addition, which is basically a battery of energy. Uh, because, for example, at the moment, those both of those machines have the internal input of uh, energy, but I have no way to store energy, uh, buildcraft energy. Now, there is actually a solution to this problem. You can actually do store buildcraft energy, but I'm not going to touch that here. It's not that important. 
what you need to understand uh, that, for example, in the industrial craft energy, it's generated completely entirely different. Uh, industrial craft gives you many different methods to generate energy. I'm going to touch on the simplest one. It's a generator. The way it works, you simply burn something and it generates energy. You can burn anything that's burnable. So I got some saplings on me, simply burns through them, and the energy is being stored. As you can see, I've got 500 EU per tick stored at the moment. Uh, you can also dump some coal in it. Of course, it will take a little bit longer to burn, and it will then in turn generate energy. I think in terms of numbers, you can actually see that the NEI tooltip of an item actually tells you that one piece of coal will generate 4K EU, it will generate 4K uh, energy units at a rate of 10 EU per tick. So every tick uh, for a coal, every tick is going to generate 10 EU. Uh, so that's pretty much 200 EU per second. And it will overall generate uh, 4,000 EU. Now, the way you move energy around with industrial craft, again, once again, there are main different methods. Well, not main different methods, but there are different methods. I'm going to use cables. Now, as you can see, uh, main different cables. The cables I'm looking for are down here. You've got copper cable, uninsulated copper cable, gold cable, uninsulated gold cable, uh, double insulation, HV cable, all sorts of different kinds of things. They pretty much correlate to the different voltages levels of industrial craft. Industrial craft have uh, four levels of voltage uh, that each machine can output. So bad, bad box is the most simple um, most simple energy storage of unit available in industrial craft. It outputs uh, 32 EU per tick, which is a low voltage, uh, which then in turn can be uh, moved around by the most simple type of cable, which is the copper cable. The copper cable is created using copper and something called rubber. I think it actually would be a good idea to show you how exactly to get rubber. Uh, if I get myself a rubber sapling, and actually rubber trees are generated in the world, but to make things short for this tutorial, they, similar to other trees, they drop sapling, and once you get that sapling, if you plant it in the world and apply bone meal to it or let it naturally grow, it will look like this. And as you can see, it has this spot right here, and there may be some more spots on the on the rest of the tree, tree trunk. But the way uh, you operate with it, you get something called a tree tap. A tree tap, again, something very industrial craft related. You simply right click the, uh, the spot on the tree and you get yourself some stick resin. The sticky resin, in turn, you simply cook it in the furnace, and I'm going to use my powered furnace because it's so conveniently available right here. Uh, let's replace this with this. It's going to finish the current process of smelting one piece of pulverized iron. And the moment it finishes, it will start cooking the sticky resin. And when the sticky resin finishes processing, one sticky resin in a powered furnace will give you one piece of rubber. Now, of course, if you've learned what I've taught you, you'd know that you can actually check all the uses for sticky resin and actually realize that you can also use a machine called an extractor, which is an industrial craft machine, which will give you, in turn, three pieces of rubber instead of one, if you, instead of, if you uh, use it in the extractor instead of the furnace. So, fast forwarding a little bit, uh, basically when you combine rubber and some copper together, you're eventually going to get some copper cabling. And very simply, uh, the way you connect your networks in industrial craft at least, the bad box as you can see has a dot right here. Now it has a dot right there because I place it in the world like this, but if for example I am unhappy with the direction of uh, myself placing it, I can actually craft, once again, the industrial craft wrench, which is created with bronze. If I get myself one of those, fast forwarding a little bit, I can right click on any direction that I'd like to have the uh, output facing of the specific, um, the specific bad box. And let's say I would like to have it right here. So the way it works, I simply place the cable from the output into the specific machines. As you can see, this error basically um, stands for the amount of internal energy storage that those machines have and now I can cook with them whatever I want. So the macerator once again is the equivalent to a pulverizer. I can simply dump iron ore into it and it will get macerated. It will, it's slightly slower than the pulverizer but you can actually apply upgrades to uh, macerator, industrial craft macerators. Once again, not a part of this episode, this is a whole another episode, but as you can see, those are the energy networks. 
Okay, so this uh, video pretty much came to an end. I hope you guys have managed to understand the concept of energy networks and the way they work. As I said, many different mods have many different networks. Pride Energy Sticks, for example, have its very own intelligent network, which both combines energy and items and storage, and every different mod has its own different network. Those that have networks, of course. Alright, so that was it. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video tutorial. If you have, please leave a like, comment and subscribe. Thank you guys for watching. See you guys next time.